Sanat Palislamovich is the co-author of Junos High Availability. Thank you so much, Sanat, for joining me today. And before You're we welcome. start talking about the book, why don't you tell me what you do for Juniper Networks? Um, I work as a systems engineer. Okay. So I basically uh, work in sales uh, with uh, customers, helping them design their network, and the same token also take their information back to our uh, PLMs and make sure that we develop features and uh, equipment based on customer needs. How did an engineer in sales decide to write a book about high availability? That was more of what do we do with our free time. <laughs> okay. And you read a, a book like this, correct. huh? Well, Pretty impressive. Uh, correct. At, at that time, we were actually had an entire team that we were looking at what's needed mm -hmm. as far as the press, and we had different uh, ideas about it. There was a QoS quality of service book that was on the table and we discussed that and we didn't have enough people to do it. So this was another book that we thought that was needed at market at that particular time. The reason why is that we have books that are particular to routing, we have the books particular to switching mm -hmm. for certifications, but there's not a single book that actually covers high availability as a concept as a whole network solutions. All in one place, all in one correct, book. Correct, correct. Now I have to admit I have not read all uh, 600 oh, that's so some odd sad. pages. <laughs> I will get to it, I promise. No but why don't you share a few, uh, a few of the highlights or a few of the nuggets that readers can find inside. It covers everything that networks needs mm -hmm. from A to Z, right? So it, it talks about different aspects of routing, of switching, uh, of scripting, anything that, make, that will make the network uh, more highly available meaning less uh, downtime. So what it does, it has a lot of tweaks to configurations in the routing world, in the switching, like uh, VRP issues, uh, BFD, and the new you know, fast converging protocols and whatnot. So everything that will uh, outer, so the operator use to make his network highly available. Who is the target audience? Uh, so it would be, in this case, network operators, architects, uh, solution designers, mm -hmm. whoever deals with, uh, I guess, making a constant uptime of the network. And I understand that it's not, you know, a study guide per se, but would it help in, you know, people who want to become Juno certified? Definitely. There are a couple case studies in a the book. Uh, there's one that has to do with the routing policies and whatnot and then MPLS. So JNCIP and uh, JNCIE certifications definitely can uh, utilize this. Now let's get a little bit more specific. Do you have any advice that's in this book to help people really attack the problem of high availability? Um, well, there's a full 600 pages of advice, <laughs> right? But the Cliff Notes uh, version. <laughs> okay, so we, I guess the primary uh, idea here is, and do we cover this in chapter one? Okay. Uh, it's a cost model. Uh, the modeling cost of building high availability mm -hmm. versus uh, cost of loss of the services. Sure. So whenever it makes sense to build networks highly available, invest into routing and redundancy in the, the people designing these things, mm -hmm. right, because that's also a cost, versus loss of services, we say yes, uh, utilize the book, utilize equipment, utilize the protocols to build that uh, network to be highly available. Give me an example of where this network could be utilized. And we're where, where, where the cost of loss of services is huge. Too, too so great, for example, yeah. financial services, mm -hmm. okay, stock market. Uh, you're going, I mean, you and I, we are, we are small fishes, okay? If you go and trade online, we only trade a couple thousand dollars, whatever it is, but let's look at, you know, banking institutions, sure. right? And uh, they put like a put orders or, or call orders on their options or whatever, and loss of, let's say 10, 10 seconds or so oh, can cost them $10 million. So definitely that's where the you know book comes into play and building the networks this way makes sense. And that's just one example. Uh, I mean, you can think of all the different industries out there. Correct, like uh, service providers, for example, they have to meet their SLAs with their customers and if they don't meet them, they have to pay penalties. So that's also another uh, key factor there. Industry standard, five nines, but in this book, there's some uh, talk about seven nines. Yeah. Well, why don't you address that? In so the th there was a discussion about you know seven nines, and uh, as, as you said, mostly in industry is five nines. Going forward, everything is moving to IP world, which means everything rides on our boxes. So 
uh, as I said, financial services, uh, uh, enterprises, uh, service providers, uh, your voice calls, your cell phones, your microwaves, your mm -hmm. parking, everything is going to be on IP, right? Mm -hmm. so which means the cost of loss of information is higher than it used to be before. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the redundancy and high availability has to have a little higher uh, notch. So we may not be there yet, but that's where we're going. That's correct. Well, we, we think we are with, you know, with everything we have today. There's always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. So yes, we are moving into, uh, into a direction such as um, the forwarding redundancy, the hierarchical fib, uh, which is just gives us different options in a forwarding plane to make them uh, converge faster. Then uh, in MPLS world, we have a concept of tail, node, tail end node protection, uh, again, to make the services converge faster. And that sounds like all the material in the sequel to this book. Definitely. <laughs> in the meantime, we've got your Juno's High Availability book. Thank you so much, Sanad, for joining us. Appreciate You're the information. Thank you.